so I ended up doing the solo and I like kind of just realized how fun that was like because I'd never performed for anybody so that transition is kind of like what made me realize that I was having like more than just worries and sadness that this was actually probably like a mental illness I was working for Jack in the Box and then I kind of like in the middle of that year I, I quit so I can do Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Today. I'm here with Kaylee Morg. Hi. So you're born in Phoenix? Yeah. Um, my, my whole family moved from Chicago to Phoenix oh. like when I was in my mom's stomach. But yeah, so that's where I lived yeah. for like 20 years of my life. <laughs> and you come from a really, really big family. Yeah, there's a second. <laughs> six kids on my mom's side and then two or three on my dad's side, so I'm like the second oldest of all of them. Oh. So I basically like raised all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. kind of musical, right? Like your dad was showing you like Paramore and all this like music when you were young. Yeah, my dad really influenced my music because he kind of got me more into the alternative scene and then my mom, she's into music too, but not so much. She's like into like country and stuff that I didn't really prefer. So. <laughs> so. Was she playing that around the house when you were growing up? Not so much around the house, but like every single time we got in the car, like the Dixie Chicks would come on. So that's like where I got that. And then on my dad's side, we'd be listening to like the Beatles and Red Hot Chili Peppers, which is like still currently what I listen to. <laughs> so that was, that influenced me a lot. And he played guitar, like everyone oh. on my dad's side played guitar. So that kind of made me want to learn how to play guitar when I was like nine or ten. And did he teach you then or...? Um, a little bit. He didn't really want to teach me just because I, he thought like as a parent, if he's teaching me, I wouldn't really get as much out of it from like as I would from an actual teacher. Mm. So I ended up kind of teaching myself for the most part and then I went to a couple classes, but it was like I kind of already knew what they were teaching in the classes. So I, I still to this day though don't know that much though. <laughs> so I just know like the basic. I can, I can play simple, simple stuff on the guitar. Mm -hmm. And what careers are your parents in? Um, my dad is a painter, well my stepdad is, and then my actual dad is a truck driver, and then my mom does hair, and she also got into like doing parties and stuff, so my oh. mom is really like creative in her own way, and she still like really, really helps me on the creative side of things now, mm -hmm. so. And was it intense growing with so many siblings? Yeah, it's definitely like made me not want to have that many kids because <laughs> it, like it really was kind of a fight for attention and mm. like food sometimes <laughs> like we were never were hungry but it was just like they would make dinner and I'd come down and be like okay like what's for dinner and everybody already ate so I'd have to like make my own dinner it's kind of just stuff like that like mm -hmm. and um yeah definitely just having to like fight for your attention <laughs> <laughs> and your mom's Christian right was she like really like relig was it like a religious upbringing um it wasn't like my mom is Christian but I wouldn't say she's like super religious to the point where it was like we were going to church all the time mm -hmm. and, and that I was growing up like believing in in that one God like it was kind of being forced on me but it was like I don't know it's definitely what I grew up like thinking was my personal choice just because my whole family was Christian and then mm -hmm. as I got older I was like okay I realized that there was like multiple points of view and like opinions and choices that I could have on my own so now I'm agnostic and my mom will still be like Kaylee Jesus will find you and I'm like mom <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah she doesn't like she never like forced it on me especially because my actual my biological dad is agnostic so mm -hmm. going between the two houses I was like kind of exposed to multiple opinions and stuff mm -hmm. And you said in your um, Q&A that you had, like, multiple near-death experiences, right? Like, yeah. what were those? Um, the, well, the first one I remember when I was, like, my, well, I didn't remember it, obviously. But <laughs> when I, my mom said when I was, uh, when she was giving birth to me, like, I snapped my collarbone and, like, I was, I was oh. like, it was just really dangerous, like, the way that I came out. Yeah. And then when I was two, um, she said one morning, like, I was being really quiet like in my crib and she's like okay this is weird like she's sleeping in really late and that when she went to go check on me I had like um I had like a string baby blanket and it was wrapped around my neck and if I moved I would have like oh choked. Oh my gosh. So it was kind of like stuff like that I can't even think of too many other experiences I know there's like time when I would 
I was riding my bike where I was like this close to being hit by a car and like stuff like that that's just happened to me like since I can remember. Mm. But it's, it's been crazy. <laughs> How do you describe your personality back then growing up? Growing up, I would say, I think I was like pretty naive and I was like one of those kids that like really wanted to fit in and kind of um, tried pretty hard, but at the same time, like I was really creative and like um, kind of stuck to myself a little bit. And um, once I got past that phase, I was a bit more introverted and kind of just mm. realized I didn't want to be like everybody else <laughs> so I kind of became more independent did you like school um for like for a little while yeah like when I was in elementary school I really didn't mind it as much um I did have like some separation issues with kind of being away from home and away from my parents and stuff at first and then I, once I adjusted I enjoyed being around like so many people my age but once I was in like middle school through high school I was just so done with it <laughs> like mm. and I, I never actually went to like college or anything because like, I just hated it that past that point what about it didn't you like I think it was just like feeling like everything I was being taught was so useless mm. like some stuff is important yes but it's like I didn't really need to learn how to like do a lot of the things I learned in math or like <laughs> <laughs> like I just I don't know there's just like some stuff that was completely pointless to me and I was like I don't understand like why we can't be learning about things that actually I'm gonna like carry into my adulthood mm -hmm. so I just kind of found it pointless. <laughs> Did you like music class best or any other classes? Yeah definitely um I actually started taking choir when I was in third grade so I and like you weren't actually allowed to um, enter choir until you were like fifth or sixth but they let me in early so I did that from third grade to eighth grade and then in high school I was like a little bit worried about uh, taking choir again because it was a different teacher than I had had from third to eighth grade and but I did it anyways and that's when I kind of started enjoying it a little bit mm. less because um, that's when I started like making my own music so it was a little bit harder for me to like sit in a class and have to kind of read this like sheet music that was not my style at all yeah. <laughs> you just have to like not have any creative control so that was a little bit difficult but like through when I was younger I actually really enjoyed it because it taught me a lot of the things I know now and when you were in second and third grade, you we did a, like a recital, right? And that's when you realized you really wanted to sing. <laughs> yeah, I did. So we had this thing where like everyone had to participate in it. Like every, I think I was in like third grade. Like every single third grader had to do this musical thing. But there was a few kids that got um, that got uh, solos, and so I tried out for one. And there was like four hundred people at oh, the wow. yeah. So I like did it. You can hear it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I ended up doing the solo, and I like kind of just realized how fun that was. Like, because I'd never performed for anybody, I had still been singing up until that point, but I just never like performed anything like that. So after that, like, I just really got into um, like trying out for more solos and performing. Do you remember what you sang that day? I don't remember the name of it, but it was like some silly song about like taking piano lessons <laughs> it was it was so weird it was very simple like for an eight-year-old to memorize <laughs> and from then onwards were you like known as like the singer in your school or uh kind of yeah there was like a couple um people that were really into like music and singing but um that yeah so like when I was in elementary school definitely um but once I got to high school like there was a lot of people that were into um, you know, like the musicals and singing and stuff. So I don't think I, I was like there was even an award given to a couple of people for like most likely to become like a famous musician or and like that was never given to me. So I was like, <laughs> well, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it was a, uh, yeah, like I kind of got a little bit in the in the dust when I was in high school. <laughs> but yeah. And did you always have? Were you always like nervous and like was it uh, anxious back then also? Or? Um, I didn't really start developing like. Well, I guess I probably was, but I didn't start noticing and like, really realizing it was an issue until I was in middle school because uh, I went to the same school for about nine years from kindergarten to eighth grade, and so the transition to high school is like what really started making me worry about things that like I usually wouldn't worry about and like feeling a lot of social anxiety so that's kind of when that stuff develops and I like realized that it was an issue I guess
And then how did you realize you were bipolar? Well, I actually had, um, so that transition is kind of like what made me realize that I was having like more than just worries and sadness, that this was actually probably like a mental illness. So I went to um, a therapist and a psychiatrist and I was diagnosed with depression and that kind of happened for a little bit less than a year. And then this kind of like incident happened and I was in a behavioral center for a little bit and they were like really kind of analyzing me to see what was the actual issue and I was re-diagnosed with bipolar. So I've had that like medication and all that stuff like put in place for about five or six years that I've known. Oh. So I feel like I've definitely like started to understand it a lot though compared to how I used to like analyze how I was feeling because now I feel like I have a lot more knowledge on like when I know that I'm feeling manic or depressed and I kind of see like the signs of when I'm starting to feel differently than I usually do. Mm. And is it something you still deal with strongly like day to day now or not as much as before? I don't think like I'll ever stop struggling with it really but it's like something that I learned how to deal with easier than I did before I guess. Mm -hmm. What kind so. of advice do you have for people who are going through it or dealing with it? Um, I'd say like just really try to educate yourself and like understand when your moods are switching and like just because it's different for everybody so I feel like understanding yourself and trying to catch like when you're feeling a certain way and not just like like stay in the slump and like stay there like you know what I'm saying and just mm -hmm. actually try to like help yourself and like tell somebody else about it is really what like helped me a lot so I didn't feel so alone and like mm -hmm. you know and have you always been into Sailor Moon <laughs> I never like I was never like super into it but I um I used to like watch Sailor Moon and stuff and I kind of like had a little crush on her and I was like <laughs> into it when I was um in high school a bit and then it was kind of just like a little phase I had and then I kind of outgrew it <laughs> but yeah and then after you finished high school you like took a gap year right yeah, so I was kind of, like, nervous to tell my parents about that because my dad is, like, super, like, okay, you need to go straight to college, like, get, kind of have a plan for yourself um, just to be, like, smart and secure. But I was, like, mm. I was, like, so I, can I take a gap year so I can, like, focus on music or try to make something out of it? And then I ended up getting, like, signed within that year, which was so crazy because I really didn't expect that to happen. Was that in the gap year, were you working for Jack in the Box? Is that when it was? Yeah, I was working for Jack in the Box. And then I kind of, like, in the middle of that year, I, I quit so I could do music. And was like, I need to, like, put everything, all my time and everything I have into the mm -hmm. music. And that's when I wrote Medusa in my bedroom. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Uh, and so that's kind of what like created all that's happened, yeah. I guess. Were you living with your parents so there wasn't like any pressure for you to like earn money off it yet? Yeah, not yet. My mom really like believed in me. Mm. She kind of knew that like, I just feel like she had the uh, intuitive, I don't know, like she just like really knew that something was going to happen and that something was going to come out of this. So she really trusted me to not be in school that year and to try it out. And then my dad kind of had like his doubts for a little bit and was like, okay, like you do your thing. And then this year when I had my first show and he came out to LA, uh, I think I like really showed oh. him. Like, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm doing this. And then the Medusa on Twitter just went viral, right? Like randomly, were you like super yeah. shocked? Yeah, it was like, cause I, um, I really just like didn't expect anything to come out of it. I was like, okay, I'm experimenting. And I'm just gonna see where this goes, I guess. And once I put it up there, like overnight, the next day I checked and it had over 100,000 likes. And that was like crazy to just watch the numbers go up. And I was like, oh my God, like something, please, like somebody notice this. <laughs> like, and that's kind of what happened. I found my manager through that. So. Oh, so like soon after, like he reached out to you. Yeah. Were a lot of people reaching out to you at that time? Yeah, I had like a few, bigger people like kind of being like oh this is cool you know and I was like thanks so I was kind of like seeing that something was happening a little bit. How did you realize you wanted to go with that and your manager? Should be like all right I feel like. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
sorry. <laughs> um, I kind of, I guess I realized it because like I met him and I saw how excited he was for my projects and how he kind of just like got what I was doing and then soon after that he connected me with mm -hmm. like some labels and became real. And you had like four songs right when you were like meeting all these labels that you wrote or did I, you have like... I just had Medusa oh. like I had like some stuff on SoundCloud but it wasn't really like it wasn't really like anything like I'm doing now so that kind of stuff is just like me finding beats on YouTube and like it was like recorded pretty badly <laughs> and then uh, so that's like all they got to see but like the whole EP besides Medusa like I wrote within the first month of being signed like, oh wow were yeah. you like afraid of going to all these labels or because you didn't have much out and maybe like it was kind of early on in your career that they could have like controlled you if that makes sense right yeah I mean I was like a little bit weary because I had nothing to compare my experience to because I didn't know anybody that was in the industry really. Um, I didn't like, I just didn't know what to expect and like I didn't know what signs to look out for of like what could possibly screw me over, you know what I'm saying? So I just had my mom come in because my mom's like a really great businesswoman too mm, <laughs> and I had like an attorney and stuff and we just really like thoroughly looked over the contract and I was like, okay, like, I trust. <laughs> so, um, and it's been going great. Like, I haven't, I have have so much creative control. I feel like I have a lot more than people would mm. assume. So, it's it's been really good. Yeah. And then do you, well, I guess with the Medusa, you kind of figured out what you would be as an artist, like, with your branding and, like, yeah. the type of music, even, like, the way you look with your like, hair color. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, honestly, during that time, I really didn't know as much, like, what... I wanted like Kaylee Moore to be and not as if it's like something that's that far away from like who I am but it was just like what kind of music specifically do I want to make like what do I want my look to be like like I didn't really know at the time and now I feel like it's so much more set in stone <laughs> that like everything I'm doing is um, very much more authentic and I feel like like for future visuals and music that that'll really show mm -hmm. So was it difficult going from just like making music in your bedroom to like knowing how to work studios and working with producers? Um, a little bit just because There's such a big difference between me like Feeling random bursts of inspiration and writing in my room versus like going into these scheduled Sessions like that was probably the hardest part is being like creative on a schedule. So I had to learn how to like really get, kind of sit in a room and like wait for something to come even if it took hours for me to be like oh this is an idea I have you know mm -hmm. did you have difficulties being like vulnerable in sessions and like showing like telling your story at first I did yeah like I even just meeting the producers because I had such bad social anxiety like at first it was really hard for me and I was like how am I supposed to write something that's really personal to me with the, somebody that I just met that day mm. And um, then I guess like it's just something that I learned like down the line how to open up, especially because this is like their job too. Like they sit here in these rooms, so many artists, and um, you know, just like nothing is really weird or like too mm. personal, especially in the music world, because that's what like songs really are. It's just talking about your story or someone else's story. So, what's the decision behind your YouTube and doing like Q and As and like sharing your story? I wanted everyone to like know me on a level that I feel like people don't know most artists mm. like I wanted to be really open and I actually stopped just because I broke my adapter oh. <laughs> so like everyone's like where are you and I'm like I'm not doing this on purpose I just am too lazy to go to the Apple store <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah I really just wanted to be like open on a level that's really like transparent than I've really seen any artists do because I wanted mm. to talk about like all the ugly parts of my life I guess so I'm opening up more what would you say have been your biggest inspirations for your like music videos like the coloring and like how you look um you say who or just what like what um I'd say like the coloring and stuff like for Medusa at least that video was really like I just knew I wanted like purples and blues because sometimes when I make songs I, I'm actually like seeing in color like what it means to me like when I made that song I was like oh this reminds me of purple like I my brain just like does that sometimes or I'll connect my songs with like random visual things so that's kind of like what I thought for that one but for FU that one wasn't really like 
specifically inspired by anything. Like I was just like, let's let's go walk around and just like yeah. do this video. But for my next video that's coming out, like I'm like a hundred percent like directing and um, oh nice, which is something that I've never done. So that one definitely is like you'll see a lot of symbol symbols and like color that was specifically inspired by just the way the song sounds and the way it feels you know? mm -hmm. and how about your whole like project are there any like movies or like characters or people that inspire it um i'm not sure if there's like specific things rather than just like kind of the feeling of like I don't know, I love making songs that are a little, that like make you feel a little uneasy, <laughs> like mm. uncomfortable, but at the same time it's like kind of cool and like maybe sexy, like kind of just having different feelings. For me it's all about like the way it feels, I think, more than um, like visually and the aesthetic of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And you've always been inspired by like Gwen Stefani, right? Yeah, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> I love her. I went to her show in Vegas and I was like, I swear she like pointed at me and she like stared at me and I was like, yes! <laughs> we had a moment and then after that she was like every person I lock eyes with I feel like I know you and I'm like that's my mom <laughs> she knows me <laughs> it was so exciting and how did you meet Quinine too and how did the song come about the Quinn yeah um well that song kind of was just like his team like reached out to me I actually never met him <laughs> oh. but like they reached out to me and they were like like you you'd be perfect for this like he has this open verse on this song um, and like he's heard your your music and your voice and um, so I kind of just wrote my own verse and it just like came together beautifully like I love writing for other people's songs too because I kind of get to step out of my world of music and my comfort zone mm -hmm. and go more into like what they're doing so that's cool and how about with Ethan oh that was so fun <laughs> <laughs> we made we made like three songs that day and um, do you feel this way was just the one that like like there was two that were like, these two are so good, but that one just kind of like really felt different than anything I'd heard. That felt more like us just hanging out because I had um, already like gone to that house and um, like worked with other producers that we had done sessions there. So I'd met him and like, it was just more like a friendship level of making music rather than like, oh, we're gonna sit here and we have to make a song for this reason or for this album, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it, was, it was really comfortable and just fun. And can you talk to the process of like moving to LA and like deciding to move back home? <laughs> so I moved here because um, obviously when I got signed it was like I was jumping into this world of doing sessions all the time and doing photo shoots and doing all the stuff that came with being an artist and it was just so much easier to be out here. Like at first I was like oh I just need to be here because I have to work on these days and do all these things so it made sense for me to just be like accessible and here and then I realized <laughs> that my hometown is like a 45 minute flight and I just was alone all the time and I miss because I'm a, like very family oriented person so I just wanted to be around my mom and then my boyfriend lives in Phoenix mm -hmm. my friends live in Phoenix and so it just kind of made sense to me because when I had days off like I was just still not doing anything. Oh, were you here alone? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so that sucked. <laughs> and like, I just, I have so much anxiety to like living alone was the worst. Cause I was like, if someone comes in here, like I'm gonna die. <laughs> like not even to be like that dark, but it was just like how, like I'm so small. Like, well, how am I supposed to protect myself? It was just, I don't know. It was kind of like, it was just a little scary and like lonely. And um, yeah, so I lived here for like eight or nine months. And then I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go back home and I can just come here like a week or two every once in a while and that's been working so far mm -hmm. <laughs> so and do you think you're gonna like move back here one day or I think so yeah because I mean right now I'm still in the very like beginning stages I mean I've only had music out for like seven months <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm not that like super busy right now but I know there's gonna come a point where like I'm always going to need to come back here and it's going to be smarter for me to be based here where mm. I can just like drive to wherever I need to go like right there if they need me rather than having to communicate everything um, like with me being in a different state. Mm. So, How would you say you've grown as a person compared to when you were younger? Um, I think I've become a lot more independent for sure and like more confident with myself because I feel like when I was younger I was always trying to be something or like someone that wasn't me and um, 
kind of like letting other people and things like influence me a lot more than I do now. I feel like I really know myself. <laughs> what is that? I kind of wish it was on me. It's like so I hot. I know, out. it's so hot. It's like a um, waterfall there. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I just feel like a lot more self-assured, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, just like I know what I want and, um, and I'm not as nervous. Especially, like, I think moving to L.A., that was like one of the number one things that made me like not as nervous. Because like, there was so many fears and things that I kind of had to get over like when I was living here. Mm -hmm. So that really helped a lot, too. Can <laughs> <laughs> you describe your tattoos? Yeah, I have, like, Or, like, 16. your favorite ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say my favorite ones are the ones, like, on my hands and my wrist. This, this is my, like, newest one. These one, okay, that, I'm, like, flipping off the camera. <laughs> um, but this one says lover, and then this one is a Taurus symbol because my boyfriend's a Taurus, and I have no regrets. <laughs> but... Yeah, then I have like these, I just think these are cool because these are the first ones you see really and then I have like ones on my arms and stuff, but this is definitely my favorite. Mm -hmm. Do you have meanings behind some of them? Yeah, some of them I do. Like my first one is this one right on my shoulder actually, and that one was originally supposed to be like a regular lotus flower, but that one, um, I wanted to turn it more into like a circular like mandala shape, but lotuses like grow through the mud mm. And I, I don't know. I just really liked kind of the symbolism of it So I got that and then like I have one that on my arm which matches with my mom <laughs> So I have like some here and there that are Even just like what was going on at the time that I got it is what makes it really special to me mm -hmm. And have you always been to witchcraft? Um, I haven't really gotten that into it. Like, it was, like, a goal for me to get more into, like, Wicca and stuff. But I, um, like, I really started getting interested in it once, um, I was starting to get so busy that I had, like, no time to really, like, sit down and learn new things and read these books and go buy new, like, crystals and, um, like, oils and herbs and things that I can actually use and, you know, teach myself, so... Um, I was into it like a little bit, I dabbled, but it wasn't like something that I mastered at all. <laughs> <laughs> what does love mean to you? Love. Love is like everything, and I, I feel like everything I'm going to say is going to be so cliche right now. No, I love it. But it's, it's all around, and I feel like um, love is more than just like a personal like relationship with somebody. Like I feel like it's... It's really even just like complimenting a stranger and like doing things like that that means so much even though it's something so small um, and it's just like I wouldn't say it's happiness but it's just a little bit of like a glow mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess what do you love about your boyfriend's personality um, my boyfriend has like this ability not only for me but for everyone he meets to like make them really comfortable mm. and to make them um, feel like it's okay to be themselves so I think that's like probably one of my favorite traits about him because I never feel comfortable with anyone but like my immediate family because they know me so well but he makes me feel comfortable like yeah. even when I'm because I'm such a nervous person so that's really helped me a lot <laughs> how did you meet him um so he like it's actually kind of crazy he, his mom like randomly got this job offer in Phoenix because he's from Virginia and then, sorry, it was so loud. And then, um, so he randomly moved to Phoenix, and then he randomly found my friend group because he's a, a producer and he was looking up, oh. like, Arizona artists on Instagram, and he just found my friends. And then they were coming to visit me in L.A., and he just, like, happened to be there, and so he came to my house, and at first I was, like, like, I didn't, at first I didn't know he was coming, so I was kind of like, who is this kid in my house? Like, I don't know you. Because <laughs> they didn't tell me somebody was coming that, like, I'd never met. So I was kind of just like, okay. And then after, like, the night went on, like, I was like, oh, like, he's got a little accent. Like, he's, he was really cute. So I kind of just, like, we just started talking. And I actually had a dream about him that night, like, after I met him. So that's how we started talking. How long ago night. was that? That was, like, back in February. So we've been dating oh. for, like, five months now. But yeah. He's, I feel like I've known him for, like, years and years. <laughs> he's just, like, so... He's so cool. I love, <laughs> I love that. Last question. What do you want to be remembered for? I don't know. Like, that's a really heavy question because I don't even know, like, what's most memorable about me. Um, I feel like, obviously, through music, 
I want to kind of have done something that's slightly different than what everyone else is doing. I obviously want to like do something that inspires other people to want to make music and make a different kind of music than they usually would. And then like personally, I feel like I want to be memorable for, I guess just being open and being like completely transparent and like making people feel like it's okay, like to have issues and to have things that are like kind of baggage because that's what I got. <laughs> that's what everyone has, but I feel like they feel the need to hide it. And um, I kind of just want everyone to like feel like they're okay. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys.